Hello Eagles, we're going to get started with our next unit on ecology and we're going to start today with going over some notes over the Earth's four spheres and how they all interact with each other. This sets the tone for basically all of our learning the rest of the year um, as we're studying all the different branches of um, life science and how Earth works. So you have this document in your modules, you will have your own in there. I would like you to take notes on your document as I go through this one. You'll save it to your file folder and then you'll upload it to um, me so I can see that you have a complete set of notes. So let's get started. It says, how do Earth's spheres interact to support life on Earth? So we have a picture here of these four spheres and you watched three videos on these spheres on Edpuzzle. We have the geosphere, the biosphere, the atmosphere, and the hydrosphere. So these prefixes, geo, bio, atmo, and hydro, have um, <clears throat> they each have very important meanings, um, scientific meanings that we're going to go over. So we are going to start with the, since that is uh, one we're going to start with um, first in our study. So the biosphere includes the living. We're going to put plants. Oh, I got to pick my pen. The living plants and animals in the many biomes on Earth. So our first unit, we're going to be talking about biomes, what makes up a biome, and the different parts of a biome. So it says bio, the prefix bio comes from Greek for life, L-I-F-E. It's Greek for life. So it says living organisms give off moisture through respiration and perspiration. Greek comes, comes from the Greek for life. So let's go down to Atmo. Atmo comes from the Greek and it stands for air. A I R. Atmosphere. Air. Then we have the hydrosphere. Hydro comes from the Greek word for water. And geo comes from the Greek word for ground. You can be writing with your pen or typing in here, either one. So bio means life, atmo means air, hydro means water, and geo is Greek for ground. So Back we go. So it says the biosphere includes all the living plants and animals in the many biomes on Earth. So any living thing on Earth is in the biosphere. So we're going to go across to right here. It says wind can carry seeds to new places. So this is an interaction between the biosphere and the atmosphere. Bio Biosphere is all the living things on Earth. Plants, animals, everything in those kingdoms. Atmosphere is everything in the air. So the wind, the weather, the things like that. So this is an interaction between these two spheres. So wind carries seeds, which are from living things, to new places so more plants can grow. That's an interaction between the biosphere, <clears throat> excuse me, and the atmosphere. The atmosphere includes all of the gases, G-A-S-E-S, -E gases on the planet. There are five layers to our atmosphere. I'm going to make my pen a little smaller. There are five layers, L-A-Y-E-R-S. There are five layers of the atmosphere. And those layers 
from the closest to the Earth to the farthest from the Earth, we live in the troposphere. That's where we live. That's the closest to the Earth. Then stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. So this is us right here. We live on the troposphere. And then you're getting farther from the Earth's, Earth's surface as you go this way. So that's our atmosphere. There are five layers, and we'll learn more about those layers when it comes to our weather unit in the atmosphere and our water cycle and things like that. So let's go over here to hydrosphere. Hydrosphere includes all of the water on Earth, including rivers, lakes, oceans, and glaciers. And there are other bodies of water. We have seas. We have ponds, creeks, bays, etc. B-A-Y-S, bays. So all forms of water on Earth. So a little interaction between the hydrosphere and the atmosphere. A big one's going to be the water cycle, which we'll talk about in this first unit. But it says air temperature impacts the evaporation of lakes and streams. So air temperature up in our atmosphere affects the evaporation rate, which is water turning into a gas and rising up into the atmosphere. So air temperature, sun, has a lot to do with how quickly bodies of water evaporate. All right, so then we're going to go up here to the geosphere. The geosphere, again, Greek for ground. The geosphere includes only the non living soil, rocks, and minerals that make up the land on Earth. So biosphere, all the living things. Geosphere, all non-living things. So it says we have an interaction here as an example between the geosphere and the hydrosphere. So it says, water erodes, erosion, wears away. Water erodes the land, bringing nutrients into our lakes. Okay, so there's an interaction between the water and the ground. Together, together. So let's see up here. We have an interaction between the geosphere the ground, rocks, soil, minerals, sand, all of those things, and the biosphere, which are all the living things. The remains of dead plants and animals can get buried under, I'll make this a little bigger, underground, G-R-O-U-N-D, underground, to form coal and oil over long periods of time. Remains of dead plants and animals, those are called fossils. Fossils get buried under layers and layers and layers of rocks and soil and dirt. And they're press they have a lot of pressure on top of them. So as they get smashed and they're subject to heat and pressure, coal and oil are formed deep beneath the earth. That's why they are often called fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are made from this compression of fossils beneath the earth. So the pressure of the fossils creates oil and coal that we use for energy. We burn them for energy. Okay. 
So let's see if we got everything here. I think we have it all. Inside of this little circle here, you see it says bio life, geo earth, chemical cycle. Bio geochemical cycle is the pathway by which a substance moves through the biosphere, atmosphere, hydrosphere, and geosphere. Earth's spheres are all connected. Earth's spheres are all connected. So there are some examples here about how they are all connected. Living organisms give off moisture through respiration and perspiration. When we sweat, respiration is when we breathe. Perspiration is when we sweat. So it says in the hydrosphere, water availability impacts plant growth and animals who depend on plants for food. All living things are putting water to survive. So the hydrosphere is highly critical to all living things on Earth. So there's a very close interaction between these two spheres here. And then our atmosphere, it says chemicals in the air impact the weathering of rocks chemicals in the air, so that would be forms of our pollution. Chemicals in the air impact weathering or wearing away of rocks, which are part of this geosphere. So up here it says geosphere. A volcano, which is part of the geosphere. It's a poor attempt at a volcano. A volcano erupts adding carbon dioxide into the air. So CO2 is given off by erupting volcanoes, which adds carbon dioxide into the air, which affects our atmosphere in the form of any, anything that puts excess carbon dioxide in our air, um, increases what's called global warming. and the greenhouse effect. So global warming, the greenhouse effect, the greenhouse effect caused by things being put up into our atmosphere um, that trap heat. So that's rising temperatures, melting ice caps, things like that are a result of global warming. So I think those are all of our little notes here that I wanted us to take today. So do make sure you have these copied, saved to your file science folder, and then please upload this so I can make sure that you have all of your, your notes. These are called doodle notes. They're kind of fun. And since you have this lovely little technology here, you can actually, if you want, color. I'm not a very good color. I've got to get used to my little pens, but I think you're probably better at it than I am. But doodle notes are fun. We're going to use these quite often um, because you, you know, you just got to have fun with your notes. So you can color these in, do different little uh, artsy things with them if you want if you want. It's kind of fun. So coloring relaxes you. We need to relax every once in a while. So that's all I have for today. After you have this all done, downloaded, saved, uploaded, sent to me, uh, you may go to Quizlet and I'm making a card set with, uh, starting a card set with all of these prefixes and some vocab to get us started with our unit. Have a good day, Eagles!